Hi everyone, it's Kara, and today we're gonna be talking about loops. A loop is something that tells the computer to repeat some of the commands that we've written a certain number of times so that we don't have to write the same code over and over again. It also makes our code easier to read and less prone to mistakes. With the type of loop called a for loop, we can tell the computer exactly how many times it should repeat a set of commands. Just like when your teacher tells you to run around a track twice. They don't have to say run around a track and then run around the track again. That'd be kind of silly. We can tell when our code needs a loop by identifying patterns. For example, if we look at code that makes a square, we see a pattern of forward right, forward right, forward right, forward right, which is just going forward and turning right four times. This means that instead of writing out the commands four times, we can just write them out once and tell the computer to do the commands four times. Let's delete the extra commands and then add a line above them where we will add in the for loop. Writing out a for loop is a little tricky. We start with the word for and then add I in range and then put parentheses. Inside these parentheses, we write how many times we want to repeat. In this case, four. For the four times we had the commands written before. At the very end of our for loop, we need a colon. We also have to tell the computer what we want to repeat. All the code we want to repeat has to have a tab in front of it, like an indent that you would put at the beginning of a paragraph. So the computer knows what goes inside of the loop. Let's run that code. And we can see that it draws a square exactly like before. We can also use for loops to create shapes that would be really hard to draw without a loop. Mainly circles. When we draw a circle, we don't really have any sides, but we actually draw a bunch of tiny lines and turn a bit each time, which we can have our loop do for us. I'm gonna delete the code for our square and then start by writing out a new for loop that repeats 36 times. And each time we repeat, we will go forward 18 and turn 10 to the right. Notice that because we're turning 10 degrees each time and turning 36 times, we go 360 degrees in total, which is the exact amount we need to go in a full circle. Even though we only move forward 18 each time, as we run the code, we see that it creates a rather large circle because we're repeating so many times. I think I wanna try drawing a circle that goes to the left instead of the right. How do you think it's gonna look different? We can add another for loop, and this time we're gonna make our circle a little bit smaller by only going forward 12. And don't forget, we were gonna to turn to the left instead of the right. Do you see how this creates a circle sitting exactly on top of the one we drew before? Because we turned to the left, our turtle ended up going in a different direction. These two circles kind of remind me of something. They actually remind me of a snowman. So I want to finish drawing our snowman. I'm first gonna add a few comments to clear up what's happening in my drawing and explain it so I know what it's doing later. To draw the circle that's gonna make our snowman's head, we can't just turn left or right we actually need to move to a different spot. So we need a set of pen up, go to, pen down commands. For this project, we should go to 0, 228. Remember, to find these coordinates, you sometimes just have to guess and check until you get exactly where you wanna go. I'm gonna add the code for one last circle. First the for loop, then the forward, and since it's the smallest, I'm only gonna go forward eight pixels, and then finally write 10. Notice that we only change the forward to change the size, just like when we're drawing any other shape. When you draw a square, you always turn to the right 90, even if you're drawing the tiniest of squares. That's how our circles work too, so we're always gonna turn right 10, at least if we're repeating 36 times. There's our finished snowman. Well, he's not quite finished yet, he doesn't have a face. I'm gonna give him some eyes, 
but they're going to use code that we've practiced before, so you should be able to figure them out with some experimenting. But we might need to talk about the smile because we need a half circle. First, I'm going to go to the right spot. We need to go to negative 11, 175. Then, we need to turn 90 degrees to the right so that we're facing the correct direction to draw our smile. We can draw a half circle by repeating 18 times instead of 36 because we only need to go halfway around but we don't want to change anything about the shape that we're actually drawing. We add a for loop that repeats 18 times and our forward only needs to be two pixels because we want the smile to fit inside our snowman's head. We still need to turn to the left 10, just like if we were making a full circle. Now, doesn't our snowman look so happy? We needed a lot of loops for this project because otherwise, anything that we had in a loop, we would have needed to write either 36 or 18 times, and that would have taken a while. We also can use some of the other commands that we've learned to customize our snowman. Here's an example of one I made. I changed the background using the screen.bgcolor command, and I added some arms. You can add whatever you want though. Thanks for chatting with me today about loops.